A while back, I experienced what I believe to be the worst fighting game I've ever played. Okay, whoa, hold on. A new it was Criticom, an early 3D fighter for the PlayStation that was devoid of mechanics, charm, compelling characters, and just about everything you look for when you have a desire for digital pugilistic supremacy. As of the time of this writing, I believe it to be the bottom of the barrel when it comes to professionally made retail released fighting games, which discounts, you know, steam trash of course. That being said, I haven't played and analyzed every fighting game ever released, just a lot of them, so I guess it's possible that there is something out there smellier than Criticom. So now my quest begins to find the worst fighting game. Yeah, no, we've played the intro already. The th thanks, thanks, yeah. I'll be looking at well-known and not-so-well-known trash fighters to see if Criticom can be dethroned, and doing so via three main parameters. Presentation, which encompasses character appeal, graphics, and art style. Mechanics, which will cover the gameplay, modes, and features. And finally, and maybe most importantly, game feel. This is what divides unplayable garbage like Criticom was so bad it's good poverty like Jackie Chan Fists of Fire. It's that certain mm, je ne sais quoi that can only be experienced when you go hands on in a few rounds. So with that preamble out of the way, let's... What I'll be judging today is the fairly infamous N64 fighting failure, Dual Heroes, which was released in 1997 and published by Hudson Soft in Japan and 1998 in North America by Electrobrain. Also, some company called Gaga Entertainment in Europe, which uh, probably has no relation to the real Gaga. But Hudson Soft, eh? Well, that's kind of interesting. But what's more interesting is the actual developer. Produce! Produce? Which some of you might not know by name, but you'll most certainly know by their past work. They're responsible for a number of 16-bit RPGs like The Seventh Saga and Brain Lord, but are known best for developing some of the greatest Bomberman games of all time, specifically Super Bomberman 1-4. Dual Heroes was their first, and as we'll see, only attempt at a fighting game. It implemented a Sentai superhero aesthetic to go along with its complicated backstory, a backstory crafted by the legendary writer-slash-character designer Keita Amamiya, who's worked on everything from Kamen Rider and Ultraman to Onimusha, Final Fantasy XIV, and most regrettably, Dual Heroes. It averaged a 39% on game rankings and often finds itself on lists of the worst fighting games on the N64 and also in general, like of all time, but we won't know for sure until we boot it up. So let's start with that presentation. All right, so this is the main menu for Dual Heroes. It's a little, yeah, it's it's just a still image and with no explanation. But um, that that's not the best opening image that you can have. I know, like you know, N64, PlayStation, things were kind of limited in in your main menus and their complexity. There does seem a lot of options here, which is nice. But let's just let's just go into story mode and, and see what's going on with that. All right, here are our dual heroes. Always a fan of a select screen that does something different. This is Gun. Each person has their own personalized theme song, which I also like. So what I like here is that all the characters, we'll, we'll look at their in-game models, of course, but at least they're, you know, vaguely different. They all have kind of a uh, eye shield sort of aesthetic going, which is fine, especially for Sentai heroes. But wait, wait, there's J Julie? Ju Julie? Looks like a wolf person, which I'm, I'm kind of all about. And this is Ho. 
All right, in total here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ooh, so the bare minimum amount of roster. I'm gonna have to check up to see if there's any unlockables, but eight in in 97, 1998. It's 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 a little paltry. I know this is you know produces first 3D fighter, but that's a little less interesting. We're we're gonna go through the characters though. All right, he's the fire hero guy, and th this is interesting because it brings us to a separate screen where we can look at this and press OK or cancel to back out. Guy was born in Colony uh, Sigma at the age of 10, moves to Neo Tokyo on Earth, born in space. I can't read it. Can't fucking read it. That's, mmm, that's, that's not great. So unlike Criticom, which showed, you know, pretty bad but also hilarious CG intros in 64, obviously a little bit more uh, limited, but that goes way too fast to read at a reasonable level. So that that's a point off there. It goes up again, so that's nice. Produce thought like, well, just, just let the little kid, just let little fat baby Matt uh, read this and when he can't read it, he'll just let it cycle and he'll be able to read the next paragraph. Um, so it's plus one for doing a screen like this. It's minus two for making it go way too fast. All right, nice wind blowing, royalty free wind sound effects. Here's our story. 120 years ago, in preparation for the coming doom, mankind began an exodus to the man made satellites in outer space. But the day of judgment arrived even before half the population had escaped to space. The shift in the tectonic plate caused the shape of the Pacific Ocean to change, and a new continent was created called Elon Musk Land. After 100 years, the only inhabitable area is limited area to the new Pacific Ocean, the new continent. The nations were focused on the continent and mankind before rebuilding lives in the midst of the rebuilding Gaia Thys, the mineral which released an energy similar to those endless energy. The nations began a war with each other for domination, but controversial weapons were found inside the influence of the Gatalites. The but the Gatalites came to the erupt by the invading force of the Ziggory Emperor for outer space. After conquering the nations, Emperor Zor creates the SAP, the WAP, protected by the super gravity. Zor commands his empire from the tower under the WAP. A few brave make a few brave make a stand for defeat the Zark. They are the true heroes. What a bunch of bollocks. Okay, we're going in there with the story mode, though. Which is nice. Holy shit, that's a Final Fantasy boss. The Emperor of Mankind. Okay. This is actually not bad, because very anime, again, Japanese superhero-esque uh, stage there. Introduction. That's kind of jazzy. So that character model is that these character models are not terrible at all by N64 standards. It's a very Green Ranger of you. Oh yeah, big Sentai uh, uh, power-up transformations. Uh, I, I don't know what that is yet. We'll, we'll explore gameplay a little bit later, obviously. Um, taken on face value, this this is pretty typical for what you'd think of for N64 fighters. Okay. Um, the, yeah, again, the character model is not too bad, and the animate not too bad as well, which is actually kind of shocking me. I thought it would be way worse. Whoa! Getting heavy on that blur, though, son. You you put enough Vaseline on that camera. Ooh, that was wrong. Bit cool little power bomb there. Uh, I'm not sure about this camera angle for for a fighting game right now. It's now turning into an arena fighter. Did I control that? Who did that? Yes, I do. There is a button to switch camera controls. You know, plus one for presentation there. All honesty, that's pretty neat. All right, all right. Again, uh, they just layered that shit on nice and thick. It is, there's a certain style to it, those those KOs. I, I don't know if it works in their favor, in all honesty. Maybe it's just Ho's theme. Uh, this music, pretty farty music, all things considered right now, but that might just be his theme and his stage, so it might not be ideal. I get that. It's tough, Ho. All right, so that's round over, match over. Uh, I'm definitively the winner, whatever my character's name is. What happens with just stage two? There's a certain style to this. It, it is really leaning into uh, what it's leaning into, obviously. Uh, but I gotta like, you know what it reminds me of? You know what it reminds me of? Hate to say it. Uh, it reminds me of Evil Zone. I'm not, I don't wanna talk about Evil Zone right now. What? Oh! Okay, so 
on the base level, this might beat Criticom. Just based on that alone, we've only taken one character, we've seen like 10% of the game, that's pretty sick. And no one can tell me different. Alright, Kumo goes down. Not much else to see here. Um, the stages are kind of super lazy in my opinion. It's just a JPEG with like a Cajun arena. Um, and they're all just super, super colorful. We're not going to get a whole lot of variety out of these stages. Yeah, very impressive. These stages are not too different than what you'd find in like uh, Fighter's Destiny, also on the N64. Or maybe even Flying Dragon. It has been a while since I've played that one. That will not be featured on this show. Flying Dragon's awesome. I do like these fonts, though. Uh, for the Dual Heroes logo itself, and for the winner and loser messages, they're, they're stylized, and I think it kind of fits in with the, again, superhero thing they're kind of going for. Wow. Alright, so this is the final boss. We're gonna see what an ending looks like, because that goes towards presentation. He's pretty cool! Yeah! Ringouts, there's gonna be- a, I'm gonna be talking a lot about ringouts in a minute, everybody. But may, maybe this is the final boss. He is the eighth character. There might be a secret unlock. There is a final boss! Never mind! Jesus! I don't even know what to say about this guy. It's Zor! He's the guy that that really fast test text crawl told me about. Oh, yeah. Screw you, Zor, Zordon. I, I didn't even get what that, what that guy's name was. Unless there's this 10th stage and I have to fight like a celestial or some shit. Okay, a little cutscene. Amazing! All of you dual heroes, like, people that, that, that practice it. Now this is Gizor! I should have figured, this is a Sentai thing after all. Yeah, come on. Yeah, okay. So unless there's a third form, which, you know, at this point, I'm not even gonna assume. No, maybe I turn into a third form and have to fight the inner... My guy's name. Guy? Alright, he's on a mountain. He's thinking, what have I done with my life? At last, Zor and the Zodgrinian Empire is defeated, but what had caused Zor to transform into Gizor? Was it some evil energy instilled within the Gytheist? If so, then what will happen to me? With the Gytheist in my power suit transform me into an evil creature? I must find the answer. Until then, the battle is not truly over. You must keep fighting to find that answer. Here's all these heroes, all of them. The director was Keita Amemiya. He did all of it. Not all of it, obviously, but, um, okay, that is a look at the ending. Um, you have to do that to, to give some... Sometimes you'll just get, like, a text scroll, but there's a little bit more. I like how it was written from that hero's perspective rather than just, like, a nebulous narrator somewhere. That's pretty solid. So, presentation-wise, Dual Heroes is a win. It suffers from a lot of N64-ness with blurry textures, subpar audio quality, and the game not playing optimally on an N64 pad. But I gotta say, the Sentai character designs shine through the technology, and they have some definite appeal. While there are common motifs shared between each of them, they have enough differences to offer some visual variety. I also think the final boss, Zor slash Ganzor, is absolute fucking money. Yes, Criticom offers robots, soldiers, and Shreks, so there are technically more unique fighters there, but they're so bland and forgettable, it doesn't really matter. Furthermore, outside of the odd Ultraman or Power Ranger titles, Dual Heroes is one of the first games to offer an authentic Sentai experience for the West, which also helps it stand out, especially on the mighty Ultra 64. The music, however... is probably the worst part of the presentation. 
All of it is just such farty nonsense, and it doesn't really leave much of an impression. And finally, slow the text scroll down, guys. This isn't a race. So let's dive a bit into the mechanics here. Now I'm gonna fold in modes and features and such in this as well. So we can already see there's a story mode uh, for one player with some text. Uh, there's versus VR, which is I assume it just versus matches against the CPU, which is also nice. Uh, versus 2P, obviously, if you have another controller hooked up. I don't know what robot is, but look, practice mode. At the base level, if your fighting game does not have a practice mode, like up until a certain point, I'd say anytime after Killer Instinct released on the Super Nintendo, which in my mind was like the first or one of the first fighting games with a practice mode, it needs to be there. I don't know what metal is either, but let's check that out real quick. Their medals, I don't know, but it's a feature. Maybe it's like in-game achievements. I don't know. So that was fun metal. Uh, let's look at practice. Let's see if the, if there's even any options. I'd be flabbergasted. Let's take Zen here. He's the dirty fighter. That's the best. So even in practice, you get these text scrolls. So I guess you could just go back and read them whenever you want. And was one of the the generals of the Zerg. There's no way. There's no way I'm reading it. Just forget it. I'm I'm pressing okay. So there's actual like a a button press indicator which is incredible for this day and age. Oh, that's awesome. So holding down guard or, or tapping guard uh, brings you up to this powered up state, which I assume you do more damage, which is, you know, nice. Does it use that bio freaks effect of T-1000 tinfoil? It sure does. So garden punch always does a throw. And I've noticed they're all wrestling moves, so pretty cool. Now, after a throw, uh, you're always kind of put like backwards almost, or if your enemy counters the throw, you get thrown off balance and get put backwards. So you're not in a great position after that. So that's a nice little mechanic. Now you have a guard, you have a punch, you have a kick. That's really it. Um, all the other buttons are more guard on top and camera switch, which is a neat feature, honestly. It's annoying that it makes this camera noise, but it's still kind of cool. Now, is there a command list? Oh, I'm, I'm, there is not. You know, that's, that's maybe a bit too advanced of a feature, but it still would have been nice. Oh, you have different throws depending on uh, a motion that you do. I also want to state that this game does not use the D-pad in any way on the N64. I'm using one of those fighter pads for the N64 for, you know, best fighting game action. So it only uses the analog stick, which is interesting. I'm not sure if that's a good thing. Um, a lot of N64 fighters either used one or the other or both, but I think this might be the only one I can think of right now that just uses the analog stick. Oh, this is interesting too. If you hold down guard and then move backwards or forwards, you do a leap or you back up with backflips. That's pretty cool actually. A lot of mobility there and it feels snappy. All right, you have special moves associated when you go into that special charge state, but they're a little awkward to do. To do this charge state, you have to hold down, pr press the guard button three times and hold it down. Then to do these special moves, it's guard guard kick or guard guard punch, which is, I mean, uh, tapping those buttons is kind of awkward, but at least there's some options there. I'm actually kind of shocked. Basically, you just have a lot of strings for your combos, punch, kick, punch. It's all, you know, kind of a rudimentary virtual fire. You can also stomp on enemies uh, uh, when they're on the ground. See if I can, I can do that. Right there, I guess. Uh, so, so there is that. So there's certainly some mechanics here. I'm actually kind of... That's your jump, by the way. That is your Virtua Fighter Moon Jump. That is, that is also done by holding guard and pressing up. Incredible. It's a unique control scheme, but it kind of sort of works. And there's those jumping moves. So this is a Jui, I think. 
Uh, a pretty unique character. It's, it's They're very animal, wolf-like, a lot of scratchy paw claws and such. Um, let's just check out their uh, transformed moves real quick. Wow, okay, cool. A little garish with the with the color scheme, but it's fine. And then, then there's that, whatever that was. I'm not even quite sure what it was. The other thing I noticed that some stages when you're going through arcade mode, they, they are walled in and, and you do get bounced off it a little bit. I'm not sure if you take extra damage, but then other stages are not walled in at all. So it's a little like, I guess, Virtual Fighter in that sense as well. Um, or maybe even a bit of Fighting Vipers. And some stages are very, very small uh, in terms of ring size. So there is some variety in the stages as kind of colorfully throw up garish they are so there is some variety in the stages despite them being kind of a cornucopia matchup of colors that they're kind of bleeding into my eyes a little bit what is robot i have to see it we have to see robot what this is this a training a training robot developed to train the fighters it has a special old chip which gives it the capability to mimic and learn the moves of one who fights against but it still needs to be trained is this to record your moves uh maybe my n64 copy is not working correctly but this is what happens when i am presented with robot um so that mode is not working for me but maybe it's working for you at home with your copy of dual heroes But even though Robot does not work, I mean, those are a satisfying amount of modes and, and options for a fighting game of 1997, 1998. Certainly a lot better than Criticom, which only had two. So we're gonna need to talk about the game feel because I'm not sure if it comes off across in the video that well, but this actually feels not too bad to play at all. It's fast, it's responsive uh, for the most part. Yeah, there's some slowdown when you do certain moves and such, but I mean, that's not, that's kind of to be expected on the N64. Um, looking at this, I do not think this runs in 60 frames. I just have a feeling that it's running in 30. Just, I might be off base on that, but um, th there's something about this where it feels like a slightly janky Virtua Fighter, which is not a bad thing at all. Like slightly janky whatever is, is good enough for me. At the base level, this does feel like a slightly jankier, well, maybe more than slightly uh, janky Virtua Fighter. But at the end of the day, Punch Kick Guard is never a bad setup, especially if this is going to be your first 3D fighting game. Might as well keep it simple like that. I mean, you don't have to go crazy. Oh my god, that's actually super sick. <laughs> oh, and I just noticed you can even free roam uh, around the arena, like... It doesn't have to be a 2D plane. You just hold the Z button and he goes around. That's a lot of variety in your mobility. And like I said, it doesn't feel bad. Yeah, there's not a whole lot of special moves here, but I'm kind of shocked at how much this game has to offer in its, its playability. It's not amazing by any stretch of the imagination, but I mean, a 39% on game rankings? I, I, I don't agree. Game rankings and the four media outlets that reviewed this. I don't know if there's any more that still exists today, but I, I'm just, of, of the time, this is a pretty ambitious, but at the same time, like, it knows what it is and it's not trying to do anything more than that. So it's doing both simultaneously. So this may be shocking, but controlling these dual heroes, in addition to the game's speed and its general feel, well, everything kind of comes together. It's not a polished masterpiece, but when you tell me something has a 39% average, I go in expecting a sloppy hot travesty, which this very much is not. What it is, though, is one of those types of fighters that was simply held back by this being the studio's first foray into 3D and fighting games, which ironically was the exact same problem with Criticom, just, you know, that wound up being Criticom. And make no mistake, I'm not saying Dual Heroes is some underrated diamond in the rough. It's definitely a product of its time, but it's still playable and has some neat mechanics. 
Therefore, in the realm of bad fighting games, I gotta place this higher, well, well, I, I, I gotta place it actually lower than Criticom via this handy dandy tier list. Yeah, just right in the middle, yeah, right there. I've played way, way better, but also way, way worse. So, Dual Heroes, you had some anti-hype around you, but it's not nearly enough to dethrone the winner. The quest is still on. If you'd like to suggest some other fighting failures for me to square up against, let me know in the comments below or over on my Twitter, and I'll see you next time on The Worst Fighting Game.